Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to another look at Frontier Pilot Simulator. In the previous video, I went through the recent updates to the game and talked about the ongoing development. In this video, I wanted to cover the first 30 minutes or so of play and then jump a little further to do some trading in one of the larger ships. And just so you know, this video is sponsored by the developers behind the game, Razor. So, we start out with the Scarab, the smallest ship in the game. Initially, the best thing to do is well, a bunch of local trade missions. We can also see that Mr. Palm, down at the bottom of the screen there a moment ago, gave us some insight on how to begin. The best thing then is to pick up some rations and take them to another base called Central, which is right there in the center of the island. Now, due to the geology of the island, the environments and all that lot, well, let's face it, they are pretty mountainous, so the only effective way to get around from point A to point B is with the VTOL aircraft. So getting used to the aircraft, it does take a little bit of doing. If I'm being perfectly honest, you can't just take off and go very, very easily. It's got some similarities with the old space games Lander. You may remember them where you just have to press the right amount of thrust to stop yourself from impacting on the ground. If you push too much, you'll shoot up a little bit too high as well. So it does take some skill to learn the maneuvers to actually come in from a reasonable landing. And you can see I was a little bit hard there. I did a bit of damage to the uh, to the ship. We can repair that though. There's some hangars around where we can upgrade and repair and even purchase new ships. Now we've landed here. This guy wants to be transported. This is a passenger. We can see him up ahead there, pick up a passenger. We're going to tell him no just for the moment, I think anyway. Uh, we want to drop off these rations. Now over on the right you can see a recharge, that's the battery recharging, the battery capacity is down on the bottom left of the screen. That gets used up pretty heavily by the VTOL thrusters, so you have to be a little bit careful there because you don't want to run out of battery mid-air. Right, what else have we got here? Ah, the first priority cargo is accepted. I understand you are a friend of Mr. Palm. Great, okay. Well, that's Siv Sevoir is another mining colony planet. They practically are neighbours, less than a week away on a cargo spaceway. There are reports of something strange happening there, and then a famine begun. wonder what that was about. Right, so it's telling us we can do some trade in here, some special orders, and they'll they're buy some more rations off us. Now this is where things start to get interesting. We can see the various products that are around and where they want to be delivered to, but that guy is pestering me again for the... For being a passenger, he wants to be shipped over to Nord. So at this point, I decided that that would be a good thing to do. Let's shake things up a little bit. Rather than doing a cargo delivery, let's do a passenger delivery. Now, Nord is right at the uh, northeast point of the island. Slightly further than uh, Central, but not too far from here. So we've got to pick the guy up. We can see him standing there. He's got a yellow icon above his head. Now, the nice thing is you can actually taxi around the taxiways here in the ships. The smaller ones move around a lot easier than the larger ones, but even then you can actually uh, get around pretty easily. You can also notice some activity around these bases. There's a few other NPCs walking around. From time to time you'll see some other ships flying around as well. Some of them are pretty large. Maybe we'll see one uh, further into the video, hopefully. There we go, he's nearly on board. He should tell us once he's in there and that we are good to go. There we go, I'm in, uh, let's go to Nord. Now, some of these passenger missions do have timers on them, and this one doesn't seem to have. Uh, sometimes the timer can be pretty short. It may only give you a minute or so to actually get to the destination. And that can be tricky because you've got to uh, overcome these mountains. You've got to make sure you don't fly through the volcanic plumes or get caught by the geysers. And it's got to be careful you don't land too hard either. All of these things within this set time frame that the passenger may or may not give you. And of course, watch out for the obstacles such as the large tower there. Now I actually made a mistake here. You can see at the Nord landing pad there. I actually thought this land there, the passenger will get out. Completely missing the obvious yellow marker up ahead where it says deliver the passenger right here. Now, if this was timed, I probably would have missed out on a successful transfer here, a successful delivery. Fortunately, he wasn't timed, so he was quite happy to wait for me to actually figure out the obvious. A little bit of a dumb move, but sometimes I do tend to be a little bit like that. It takes me a moment to actually figure out what I've done here. Why isn't the guy getting out? I clearly thought. Now, we can pick up some batteries as well. You can put cargo in the back in addition to the passenger, but we're not going to do that. 
we're going to actually uh, ship him where he needs to go. Now, once to do this, keep an eye on the battery charge gauge down the bottom left there. You can see that even at small distance travelling, it uses up the fuel at a rapid pace. Now, this really does become a problem when you want to fly overseas to the other islands. There's another island, a much bigger one, to the southeast. Now, there is another passenger there when I landed here. I wasn't initially going to take him. I wanted to get on some cargo runs, but you can see poor Paul Lair wants to... Well, he wants to go to another destination. Can I help him out? So, uh, well, why not? But let's tell the other guy he can uh, get off the ship now. Yeah, you can get off, certainly. Off you go. And we'll take the other one to uh, Port Estelle. Now, that's back pretty much around where we started. So, pretty much a round trip at that point. We'll notice here when this guy gets on board, keep an eye on his boarding card down the bottom there in the bottom right. There we go, we've got a timer. One minute to get back to Port Estelle. So, one minute doesn't sound like a lot of time. On the other hand, it feels like quite a lot of time. But it can be a bit of a problem depending on how good you are at flying these ships. It's not a great distance over there, just, what, three kilometres from the pickup point. But you've got to land very carefully. You've not... You've got to make sure you don't clip the ground. You've got to make sure you don't fly too hard. It takes a little bit of practice before you get to the point where you're about to effectively and easily do this. I lost count of the amount of times I actually crashed a ship. But eventually, yeah, you do pick up the skill. So the game does take some practice. It does take some skill. And personally, I think that is part of the challenge. It's part of what keeps you fun and interesting. Got to be careful not to come in too hard there. I know it looks like I was going to... But we've got a nice gentle touch down there. A few seconds to spare. We've got to let him out. Did we make it? Time's over. I can't remember if I made this one now. I'm playing this footage back. Let's see what he says. All right. We got one minute, 14 seconds. We landed at the pad on time. But I'm sorry for asking you again. But I still need to get to Astelen Central. No. No. We want to drop the other guy off. You gonna get out? Drop off passenger. Looks like it's the right place. May I go out? You may. Doesn't look like we got any money for that, does it? Okay. Oh no. Yes, we did. We earned the money for that. So we landed on the pad just in time. We just took a little while to uh, let him on board. But keep in mind that that's completely fine. Now. Trading is pretty much the same, travelling from A to B around the little area on here on this island. You can just tra trade the small commodities and make yourself small amounts of cash. Over time that will continue to build up, where you buy you can upgrade the engines and you can upgrade your uh, cargo capacity or battery capacity rather and go from there. Eventually you'll have plenty of money, this is a much earlier save I've got here where I've been playing for far longer. You can see I've got a significant amount more credits in. Uh, back on the other ship. This ship is the Ox. And you can see we're over here on the other island. This base is particularly interesting. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. So North 1 is our current location. We can see there's a much wider range of commodities available to us. Uh, these actually have a greater price as well. If we select a commodity it will tell us where we can uh, deliver it to or where we can purchase it from. In this case these are the needed commodities. Um, I don't think we're going to bring anything back here. This water was actually very interesting. There we go. 55,000 credits for 6.2 tonnes of water. So uh, we can go and get that and bring it back to North 1. So you can see uh, the good old Port Estelle there again. We can buy the water for 1,000 credits. So that's a massive amount of profit. Now, the thing to remember here is that we've got two separate issues. Firstly, all the ships fly very, very differently. So the large ship I've got here, the Ox, is much heavier than the Scarab. Added to that, any cargo we put in is also going to add to the way the ship flies. So water is particularly heavy and it will make, well, it'll make for increased fuel usage or battery capacity usage as we'll need to greater use of the thrusters. Now, we're not going to do that just yet. We haven't got the water at the moment. Instead, we're going to head to the floating space base, the floating platform, and pick up another commodity that we're going to take to Port Estelle. And that's a pretty interesting feature there, isn't it? It looks like some sort of uh, some sort of geothermal vent, geothermal power maybe. And you've got to watch out for these because they do like to erupt every so often. If you're flying in one of those at the time, then you're half going to know it, as your ship will indeed crash. You may be able to recover, but it's going to take some skill for you to do it. 
Now again, look at my fuel capacity here, my battery usage. We've already used 400 units. We're probably going to get to about 500 units by the time we're up. But we're going to switch over to airplane mode. Let's move forward. We get up to some speed first and then switch over. So what will happen if you don't get some speed first, the plane that will, or the ship rather, will instantly drop to the ground. We can see over on the right, we've got a slight descent going on, but we have got a bit of, um, a bit of uh, momentum going on. It's quite a nice bit of speed there. And take a look at the battery usage again. You can see it's actually going down a much, much slower than previously. So we can control our velocity here. We can accelerate right up to higher speeds or slow down a little bit. It really depends on how you want to take the approach. You can go all out and try and get there as fast as possible, but by doing so, you may use up a bit too much of the battery capacity. So here we are at the Cargo Spaceway, a big platform up in the sky, and in just a moment, we're going to switch back from airplane mode to VTOL mode. And this is, again, where things can get a little bit tricky. It does take a little bit of practice, because once you do so, the ship can potentially start to fall. We actually also need to make sure we slow our momentum down, so we need to push back a little bit on the control here and make sure we slow down and that we don't lose too much height, we don't want to fly underneath the cargo spaceway. So pretty good control there, We're looking, everything's looking good. Okay, so one thing you may notice on the cargo spaceway here is that it's like a floating aircraft carrier. It does have a bit of a runway. So if you're facing down the length of the runway and you switch into airplane mode while you're still on the ground, you can actually launch like an airplane, so that's pretty nice as well. It's something I didn't do on this particular video, perhaps I should have done, but it does save a bit of fuel, so it's a nice option to have. Now as I'm coming down here, you'll get to see the immediate difference between this larger ship, the Ox, and the Scarab. Oh, someone just flew underneath me there, taking a big risk, weren't they? So you've got to take it easy. If you come off the thruster too fast, then you're going to come down much too hard and you're going to do damage. This will be especially a problem when you've got cargo on board, and you'll see that in just a moment when we load this cargo up, which is somewhat fragile. It's not extremely fragile, but we do need to take a bit of care. And there we go. Nice, gentle landing. Let's get into the orange box, and we can choose the cargo that we're going to take back to Port Estelle. This particular cargo will give us a reasonable profit. We can then pick up the water and bring that back to North 1. All right, we're down. So it's time to look at the commodities here. We do need to recharge the battery capacity there. You can see just that relatively a short journey has used up a lot of fuel and we've got a much greater journey ahead of us. Even the more so because there's going to be a greater weight in the ship. So let's charge that up. So what we want to do here is to get, I believe it was the biolocators. These are being needed, these are needed over in Port Estelle. Let's just double check that. So some of these uh, things, some of these products you can actually make a lot of money on, but they do take some time to ship through. So uh, Port Estelle again, and yes, it was indeed the biolocators. So you can see right there, they're buying these for 24,000 credits, and uh, we can pick them up for significantly less than that that we can buy them for 2,300 credits, so about a 21,000 uh, credit profit on that. Although we will have to buy some fuel as well, but even still, around about 20,000 in profit is uh, nice indeed. So one thing we're going to see when the cargo gets inside the ship here, firstly we can see it's 4.1 uh, tonnes, or nearly 4.2 tonnes, so this will add greatly to the weight of the ship, but we can carry some uh, slightly heavier cargo, but whatever we carry does, of course, add to the weight of the ship, which changes the way the ship actually flies. But anyway, what I wanted to point out was we can see the fragility of the cargo down on the bottom right. Or at least we will be able to in just a moment. Let's get, the, uh, let's get these menus out of the way. So as I was saying, down on the bottom right there, we can see the biolocators are in the cargo hold. And the red bar represents how fragile the cargo actually is. As we move the ship around, you can see the little white bar, which becomes increasingly red as we take ever uh, more harsh movements. And as we accelerate up there, you can see that white bar becoming quite dark red. Now, if it crosses into the other red zone, the, uh, the red zone occupied by the cargo itself, then the cargo will start to take damage. It's basically representing you not flying carefully enough and causing problems. And meanwhile, you can see our altitude drop in very, very fast here. I didn't get enough speed before switching over to airplane mode. But there we go, we've got, a, we've got enough speed now, we're leveling out. 
and we've got about a hundred kilometers to go so it's just a case now of watching our fuel capacity usage and oh, picking the right speed. Now this particular flight went pretty much without incidents sometimes the weather can change causing you some significant problems but on this occasion the weather was absolutely lovely giving us some very nice visuals. Eventually I arrived quite safely back at Port Estelle and keep in mind this time we're here with the ox rather than the scarab and down on the right we've got to be very very careful with this cargo. Uh, lucky I've got a bit of experience here with the flying so a nice gentle landing is what was needed. Gently does it. And perhaps a little too cautious here but there we go. Anyway a nice profit to be made. And Portostel is indeed the location where we want to collect the water and there's plenty of water around here after all. At 1,000 units or 1,000 credits rather to pick that up and we'll take it back to North 1. But unfortunately a cyclone is approaching so we're not going to do that just yet. But I think that gives you a pretty good idea of what to expect from Frontier Pilot Simulator. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.